Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you a quick high-level demo of Salesforce CPQ to help you better understand the entire process flow. The CPQ process flow starts with configuring products and or services for your customers, which is the C in CPQ. After product configuration, we then move on to pricing the products and or services, which is the P in CPQ. And finally, after pricing, we move on to generating a quote for the customer, which is the Q in CPQ. Although there are many aspects of the CPQ flow, such as approvals, order management, contract renewals, etc., for this video, I'm just going to give the basic high-level flow from selecting products to generating the electronic PDF quote. So to start from the home page, I'm going to navigate to an account. For this video, I'll just select Edge Communications. From this account, I'm going to create a new opportunity by clicking New Opportunity. I'm going to name this opportunity a test name. I'm going to keep the close date the same, and I'm going to change the stage to prospecting and then click save. So now that we've created a new opportunity, I'm going to navigate to the new opportunity. From the new opportunity record, I'm going to create a new quote. I'll do so by clicking the new quote button. So we're presented with a few fields. The first being a primary checkbox field. Although many quotes can be created on an opportunity, an opportunity can only have one primary quote. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to make this the primary quote. For start date, I'm just going to make it the beginning of next month. I'm going to leave end date blank. And for subscription term, this field's only relevant if a subscription product is selected for the quote. Since the bundle I'm going to be selecting has only non-subscription products, I can leave this field blank. In upcoming videos, I'll go over the difference between subscription and non-subscription products. But for now, I'm just going to click Save. So as you can see under our quotes related list, the new quote has been generated. I'm going to click on this new quote. From the new quote record, as a sales rep, I can add products to the quote by clicking on this edit lines button. The edit lines button will bring me to what's called the quote line editor. I'm going to select the standard price book. So now that we're on the quote line editor, from here to add products to the quote, we're going to click on the add products button. As you can see, we're provided with a list of all the products available. There are several ways in Salesforce CPQ where you can make product selection more efficient through filters, configuration attributes, etc. But for this video, I'm just going to use the search box to find the product bundle that I want to select. So from the search box, I'm going to type in laptop. And from here, I'm going to select the 13 inch laptop and then click select. This brings us to a configure products page. This page displays the various products within the bundle that a sales rep is able to select from. As you can see, there's various sections in this product bundle. The titles of each of these individual sections is what are called product features. Under each product feature is what are called product options. Products can be sold individually as a standalone item or as a component of a bundled product. Product options act as the connecting link between a standalone product, such as the 13-inch laptop, and the other products that are being bundled with the laptop, such as the processor, the memory, and the storage of the laptop. These product features, such as process, memory, and storage, are used to organize and group product options into categories that make sense so that sales reps can more efficiently make selections for the various product options that are presented within a bundle. So as you can see, there's only one product option under processor and storage, but there are two options under memory. So I can toggle between the two. I'm just going to keep it on the eight gigabyte and click save. So after we click save, we're next brought to this page where you can edit additional information such as quantity, additional discount, start and end date, the subscription term, and much more. Sales reps can apply an additional discount in this top box. For this example, I've used 10%. In order to see this discount applied to the prices, we're going to click the calculate button. As you can see, it's reduced our overall price to $1,215. If I remove this discount, click Calculate again, it brings it back to the original overall price. If you didn't want to apply the discount to every item, sales reps do have the opportunity to apply an additional discount at the quote line level. So if I just applied it to here and click Calculate, you can see that the additional discount was only applied to this laptop 13 quote line. 
In the interest of saving you time on this video, I'm not going to make any additional changes. I'm just going to click save. Now that our quote has been created, I can share the quote with the customer by clicking generate document. And then from here, we can preview the quote by clicking the preview button. As you can see, we now have a generated quote document that we can share with the customer that has all the details about the quote. Before we share the quote with the customer, many companies require the quote is approved by necessary individuals at your company, such as your manager. Once those individuals approve the quote, you would then send the quote to the customer. If the customer accepts the quote, they can sign it electronically via DocuSign or Adobe Sign if that's connected or set up in your org. Once the quote has been signed and the opportunity has been closed one, a contract gets generated to reflect both subscription products and non-subscription products to document what your customer has agreed to. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you all for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.